Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. This is a video for beginners uh, to tell you a little bit about the worker bee, um, her life cycle, the development, her life cycle, how to identify that brood in the frame, and I hope you'll find it useful. There's not too many video clips in this, it's a lot of still shots that my daughter-in-law, Gabby Cowan, took for me, so thanks very much to Gabby for that. A fully developed colony of honeybees might contain about 100,000 bees, but more usually there's 50 to 70,000 individuals. All bees in the colony work harmoniously together with one another, uh, coordinated by a variety of chemical signals called pheromones, uh, as well as dances, vibrations, sound, and various stimuli which are still being identified. Each colony is made up of three casts of bee. More than 95% of bees in a typical summertime colony will be worker bees. Worker bees are female, but they're infertile. They're not able to mate and therefore can never lay fertilized eggs. The worker bee starts life as a fertilized egg laid in a comb by the queen. The egg, which looks long and like a long white sausage, um, about the diameter of a pin, is stuck by one end to the bottom of the cell where it remains for three days or so. Eggs can be very difficult to see, that's why I will tend to use uh, black foundation because that white egg shows up much better on a black background. On the fourth day the egg hatches to a small maggot-like larva um, and other young adult worker bees called nurse bees are going to tend to its needs. A young larvae will be visited by uh, worker bees in the order of 1300 times per day. Initially it's fed a rich secretion called whorl jelly uh, from a gland on the nurse bee's forehead. The larva sits in that shallow pool uh, consuming the royal jelly and goes round and round in circles in a characteristic C shape uh, at the bottom of the cell. As the larva ages, the diets fed by the nurse bees is going to change uh, from royal jelly to a mixture of pollen and honey. This mixture is called bee bread. The larva grows very quickly and in six days it's grown to 1500 times its original weight. A comb containing larva at this stage is tend to be filled with open brood, so you can see all the brood on that frame. Once a larva reaches day nine, which is three days as an egg plus six days as a larva, it's ready to pupate, and it's going to spin a silk cocoon, and the pupa is now sealed into the cell by worker bees using wax from the upper edge of the cell, plus wax that the workers make. This pupation phase lasts for another 12 days. A comb that's covered in sealed up larva like that is said to be full of capped brood. It's very helpful to remember the time involved in each of these stages. Egg for three days, open larva for six days, and capped larva for 12 days. This is critical in sort of what we call reading the comb. Knowing these numbers uh, gives you a very clear idea of how the colony has been developing for the last three weeks, um, indicating the health of the queen, and it also gives the beekeeper a much clearer idea of what the population the colony is going to do over the next three weeks, uh, and is the colony going to require more room. Once the worker bee emerges out of its cell, uh, it'll feed itself for the first time, feeding on stored bee bread. It's also going to beg for food from other worker for nurse bees. Uh, initially, she's going to be quite silver in colour uh, when she emerges from the cell, um, but hours later she'll be gold and black coloration of, the, of her sisters. At this stage in their lives, uh, worker bees are repelled by light. Well, that's called negatively phototactic. Uh, and that's going to keep all those nurse bees near the centre of the colony where all the brood is, so keeping that nest warm. Young workers can undertake a sequence of tasks as she ages. 
uh, young workers are referred to as house bees. The first task of a house bee is cleaning duty, cleaning cells in the brood chamber, uh, generally through the hive. She's capable of feeding herself, but will beg for food frequently. Soon her hypopharyngeal glands, that's that gland on the forehead, uh, start to produce royal jelly, and she's going to start to feed newly hatched larvae. And this will occupy the majority of her time for the next few days. She's now referred to as a nurse bee. She's going to feed older larvae a mixture of dilute honey and bee bread, um, and tending to larvae as a uh, that has a physiological effect on the work of bee, um, as she picks up pheromones from developing larvae, and that keeps her behaving normally as a normal worker bee. The absence of that pheromone, uh, she could start to exhibit unusual behavior. Uh, this will lead to a condition called laying workers. Uh, so we'll talk about that in future videos. When this young worker bee uh, is a few days older, she's going to start to position herself near the entrance of the hive, receiving incoming pollen and nectar from field bees. When nectar is received, she partially fills her honey stomach and carries this nectar to nearby empty cells um, in and towards the top of the brood chamber. Nectar now contains enzymes which start the process of its conversion to honey. Uh, many occupied brood cells will have a drop of ripening nectar temporarily stored in them uh, during the daytime. Water will start to evaporate from the ripening nectar, and when there's a good flow of nectar in the hive, each brood comb might uh, contain more than a pound or so of ripening nectar in the brood cells. Uh, if you should, if you take a brood frame and uh, shake it, shake one of those combs, it'll result in a, a splashing out of the nectar. Now, uh, this that's a really clear indicator that it's a honey flow in progress. At night, young worker bees will move much of this ripening nectar to cells higher up in the hive. When the worker receives pollen, she's going to take it to the outer edge of the occupied brood chamber, so very near the brood, but between the brood and the where the honey is stored. Then she's going to pack those balls of pollen into the cell with her head. When the cell is about three quarters filled, the worker bee coats the uh, pollen with a film of honey. And the pollen is now going to undergo a fermentation progress with the natural yeast breaking down some of the complex proteins into more digestible amino acids. Then, then it's called bee bread. Bee bread is uh, used right away, but if it's to be stored for the winter, uh, it'll be, the cell will be filled and capped off with honey and then sealed with wax. Tasks within the colony for the young worker will change according to the current need to the colony. At this stage, she may attend to the queen bee, feeding a royal jelly and removing her wastes. Uh, she might be required to do undertaking tasks, removing dead bees from the hive. During a honey flow or hot weather, she's likely to be required to circulate air in the hive. Um, the bees establish a current of air by fanning uh, fresh air into the hive on one side of the entrance, circulating it round the hive, and then blowing it out the other side of the entrance. In the, day, uh, in the daytime, this is done to keep the hive from overheating, and at night it's done mostly to remove moisture from the curing honey. At the age of about 12 days, that's since she's emerged, uh, she's capable of secreting wax and may participate in comb building. When the colony is in need of new comb, many workers in this age, uh, of this age are going to cluster together and hang almost motionless in the space where the combs needed, the process called festooning. Over a 12-hour period, thin scales of wax will form on, from glands on the worker's abdomen. She'll pick these off with her legs, pass them to her mandibles or mouth parts, uh, chew them till they're ready, uh, and then very skillfully construct that wax comb structure. Uh, wax is also used to seal cells filled with honey. By 18 days of age, the worker bee is going to become attracted to light, or positively phototactic, uh, and will commence her orientation flights. Those initial flights are immediately in front of the colony, um, and they're very for a very short period. Subsequent flights might become longer as the bees fly further from the hive, uh, noting various landmarks and colors of, uh, which are going to help her recognize the hive's location. 
I've also noticed that uh, individual hives tend to do their orientation flights at pretty much the same time every day, weather permitting. Uh, at that time, she's also going to take on things like guard duties, where she'll stand on guard for the hive's entrance. She'll be checking that all the um, and anything entering or leaving the colony, uh, whether it's a bee or a bug or a critter, whether it uh, possesses the hive odor, and if not, they'll be challenged and, if necessary, necessary stung. Over a few days, your orientation flights become longer and more distant from the hive, until uh, by day twenty-one. She's finally a field bee. From now on, weather permitting, she's going to dedicate the rest of her life to foraging for pollen and nectar and occasionally water and sticky stuff that she'll collect from buds uh, used to make a propolis or the bee glue. Uh, the field bee will work tirelessly, really, making perhaps dozens of trips per day to and from the hive. Mortality rates of the field bees is very high encountering predators and birds and dragonflies, chemicals, weather changes, all take their toll. Most field bees will work themselves to death in as little as 10 to 21 days. They might live a, about a month as well. Dying workers are usually going to crawl from the hive at night, their wings battered and torn, so they're going to gradually leave the hive on their own accord. Bees rarely like to die, will, will let themselves die in the hive. Uh, worker bees born in the fall uh, that haven't had much of an opportunity to fly, they may, might live for six months. Not all of the workers will perform all of those tasks in a lifetime. Uh, the timing is really governed by the um, demands of the colony. Uh, for example, the colonies building up brood quickly in the spring uh, might have a lot of workers dedicated to brood rearing and delay foraging activities till much later and, and then there just be an overaged nurse bee. Similarly, a color, uh, colony experiencing a sudden increase in resources and a strong honey flow coming on might promote old work bees, uh, work bees to field duty, becoming precocious foragers. We really take advantage of that when we start looking at single brood chamber management. So we'll talk about that again in the future. I hope you found that video helpful. I'll be doing another video on drones and queen bees uh, shortly. And I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please press that subscribe button and, press, and click like, share it, and tell your friends about these videos. I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. See you next time.